Today I want to talk about how these hedge funds and market makers are now trying to cover up and delete evidence about the creation of their synthetic shares, but how we've caught them red-handed at their own game, how we're forcing the squeeze, and how they're having to create CBDCs to pay for their mistake. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I'm going to dive straight in with the key information. So, Hussein tweeted saying shortly I'll release evidence that FTX centralized exchanges are not only able to counterfeit coins on them, but they also have the ability to destroy the evidence that they ever exist. Did. So not only did FTX and Bittrex create and sell or short a billion AMC tokenized securities, but they also built in a way to destroy the evidence, to delete evidence that it was ever created, that it was ever sold, and that it was ever shorted. So now let's rewind a little bit. You may have seen this thread from Chainsaw.com that said, number one, FTX claimed that all of its tokenized stocks were backed one to one according to its official terms of service document. It then said, number two, FTX listed these tokenized AMC securities and claimed that the underlying stocks were custodied with asset manager CM Equity. But number three, however, in a recent rectification from CM Equity, it shows that the firm terminated its relationship with FTX in December of 2021, which means that FTX lied about the custody of the underlying AMC shares and tokens for the better part of 2022. It says in addition to the correction of the publication of Omida Research and FTX group of companies, CM Equity AG clarifies that the cooperation with FTX trading had been discontinued as of December 31st, 2021. They've said CM Equity AG is not responsible for the offering or the holding of tokenized shares via the FTX platform, nor does it act as a counterparty in the purchase or sale of these bilateral contracts or underlying securities. And number four, it says a closer look at the AMC cost of borrow fee around the time of the FTX collapse shows some pretty major inconsistencies. This suggests that hedge funds and market makers have been using FTX to falsely locate underlying AMC shares and manipulate the stock price. As Peter Han tweeted, he said, I think a lot of people are missing the connection between FTX digital tokens and the cost to borrow. When you borrow shares to short, your broker has to claim that they can locate some shares. It doesn't necessarily matter if they're real shares or synthetics or tokenized securities, but if some stupid crypto exchange says they have 400 million AMC shares or an extra 600 million in Bittrex, then maybe the broker claims that they can easily locate them. And number five, to make matters worse, FTX scrubbed all evidence of the AMC white paper from its website on November the 27th. This page that used to talk about the AMC tokenized securities that showed the stock's price and the number of shares or tokens in circulation now seemingly can't be found. Number six, they said chartered financial analyst Peter Han first suggested that FTX synthetic tokens may not be findable by brokers, especially now that the evidence has been deleted. Not only has CM Equity denied all knowledge of the relationship, not only has FTX scrubbed the knowledge of the white paper from their website, but they also built in a backdoor to actually delete any transaction history. Especially as a few days ago, we found that FTX could also create synthetic crypto or synthetic tokens on their website. They may indeed have sold many more than 400 million securities. Even though they said the float was 400 million AMC tokenized shares, they may have sold a billion or two billion or many more with zero pushback. Especially if they did sell two billion shares, they also built in this backdoor to delete any knowledge and any evidence of those shares ever being created or ever being sold. This basically clears FTX of any wrongdoing because the evidence has been deleted. Even though the evidence is gone, the AMC price has been manipulated to the heavens, the price has been crushed, and billions of synthetic shares have been sold, but the evidence simply deleted. It seems ridiculous that FTX would come in and create all of these synthetic shares, but then delete the evidence of who created the shares, who authorized the shares, where they went, who was holding them, which broker actually saw them or facilitated them or held them on their books, and everything else else to do with those synthetic shares. Usually all transactions leave a trace, but if you simply delete that trace and then declare bankruptcy, those synthetics, even though they don't disappear as they still exist, the traces of them disappear instead. Therefore, in this specific instance of the FTX synthetics being created, nobody can really be held accountable and likely nobody will end up going to jail. But obviously with all the other synthetics that have been created elsewhere, such as through married and divorced puts, through total return swaps, FTDs and the market maker exemption and everybody else, those transactions have still left traces. 
And if you didn't already know, Moomoo Moo has increased its promotion for the Christmas holidays. Right now, they are currently giving away 23 stocks worth $2,000 each, up to $40,000 in total. And there's also a massive $60,000 magic sweepstake. So be sure to sign up right now to Moomoo Moo using the link in the description below to enter this $60,000 giveaway and receive 20 free stocks. But not only that, as Wendy tweeted, it seems that Fidelity is even getting on board to the creation of tokenized stocks and the lending of tokenized securities as well. It seems the shorts and the market makers master plan of creating these synthetics through FTX has failed, and therefore they're now trying to create them through Fidelity as well. But I personally believe it's too little too late, and I believe the hedge funds think this as well. They know they are screwed, they know based on the current market dynamic that the squeeze will happen, and therefore they need to create these CBDCs to pay for the squeeze. The DTCC published a new paper titled Exploring Post-Trade Security Settlement with a US CBDC. Basically saying that when a trade is closed out, aka when you sell your shares during the squeeze, the DTCC can simply make that post-trade settlement not with US dollar cash, but with a central bank digital currency. Suspended POS tweet is saying it's likely how they're going to pay for the squeeze. He said that's why they're kicking the can down the road as far as they can. They'll want to pay us in digital money instead so those guys can keep control of us and how we spend our money. They can ensure that we will be taxed to the high heavens and they will receive as much money back as they possibly can. Basically saying that retail stole this money from the hedge funds and the market makers and therefore you can't use it however you like. Now I do think to a certain extent that is true, but to a certain extent it's not. Ultimately the government, these market makers and hedge funds can't control what you specifically spend your money on. But they can certainly try and make sure that you are taxed on every single penny or every single cent of squeeze money that you receive and try and recuperate this money any way they possibly can through other taxes and through other charges. They're also going to have full visibility of exactly how you spend your money and exactly what you spend it on through this central bank digital currency. And it seems like the first use of this central bank digital currency will be used to pay for the upcoming squeeze. Especially as Unusual Wells has tweeted that Bank of America has said the S&P 500 could plunge a further 20% within months as a recession ushers in a market correction. Basically saying that when the United States finally admits that it is in a recession, the S&P 500 is likely to plunge a further 20% in a matter of a month or two. Again, this just confirms that we haven't yet seen the bottom of the market, the market is still indeed crashing, and many more hedge funds are yet to be liquidated. When specifically this 20% plunge is going to happen, whether it's next week, next month, or in two or three months' time, I don't know for certain, but what I do know is we haven't yet seen the bottom of the S&P 500. And on top of that, Unusual Wells also tweeted saying the Credit Suisse chairman has just said the business right now is very, very stable, which is obviously ironic and iconic, as that's exactly what FTX said the day before they filed for bankruptcy. The Credit Suisse chairman is saying that business is strong and business is stable, exactly what was said back in 2008 before the collapse of the housing market and the collapse of Lehman Brothers, and exactly what was said at FTX the day before they collapsed as well. As Rattoy pointed out, he said that Lehman, Enron, and Arthur Anderson also said the exact same words as well. If Credit Suisse really was stable and that business was really booming, the chairman of Credit Suisse wouldn't be coming onto Twitter to say that business is fine. If they were fully solvent and fully stable, they'd simply ignore the critics and ignore the naysayers and ignore the withdrawals because withdrawals wouldn't matter for a solvent and stable business. Funnily enough, the chairman also said that withdrawals had returned back to normal, which again obviously isn't the case, because if it was, he wouldn't need to tweet about it. It's just going to show that right now Credit Suisse is in a massive amount of danger, and so far, no regulators and no governments are coming to the aid of Credit Suisse. They're simply being left without a life jacket or without a life vest, being told to fend for themselves, and they are on the edge of bankruptcy. And on top of that, as Texas runner tweeted, she said first Blackstone and now Starwood, two of the biggest industry players. You may remember a few days ago that Blackstone recently limited investor withdrawals, and now Starwood, like Blackstone, are also limiting investor redemptions from their big real estate fund. It says Starwood's Real Estate Income Trust, which owns apartment buildings and other commercial real estate, has moved to limit withdrawals from the fund. 
Withdrawal requests exceeded the REIT's monthly limit in November and therefore withdrawals have been limited or restricted. So it seems like not only is the stock market about to crash by another 20%, it seems like real estate is also on its way out as well. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.